Um, so next up is Eloise Reitbauer from Dynatrace, and he's traveled to the U.S. Well, he's been in the U.S. off and on, but traveled to the U.S. for a lot of Velocity conferences. So uh, oh, now that he's living yeah. over here, I was glad to bring Velocity closer to him so he didn't have to travel as far. And he was at the BOF yesterday and did a great session. And uh, if people don't know, Dynatrace Ajax Edition, it's a very powerful tool. Uh, go back to the seminal blog post that John Resig wrote about it uh, about two years ago. And it's still one of the most powerful debugging profiling tools out there. So please help me welcome Alois. OK, thanks, Steve. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. They work? Oh, good. So today I'll give a very short pitch about what it really means to deliver exceptional performance because every time at Velocity we talk about exceptional performance, so it's time to really find out what exceptional performance really means to us. So, like this is not exceptionally fast. Uh, so what does exceptional performance really mean? So definitely exceptional performance means faster than the user expects us to be because if we're just as fast as the user expects us to be, we're not exceptionally good, we're just good. So, okay. So exceptional performance means, so what does performance mean, what the users expect? So the, the short answer is really that it depends, so what kind of interactions we run. So it, this is from instantaneous, so 100 millisecond response time for the click of a button, up to about four seconds, where then kind of user interaction starts to go away, and users start to think about grabbing a coffee rather than still looking at a website. So what this means is that websites should actually load in two to four seconds. For other kinds of interactions, uh, it's even less than that. Like if you type in a search query, you expect the result to be there in even less than a second. So, and if you compare this kind of theoretical results to what users say, like this is a study of Forrester, which in 2006 showed that users expect the website to load in four seconds. In 2009, it already was down to uh, two seconds. And like the analysts say next year, it will be down to one second. And yesterday, Steve even gave a talk about 100 milliseconds, I don't know, in 2015 or whatever. The problem there is you might not think, okay, we just have to be faster than those two seconds. Unfortunately, or luckily, people are not clocks. So this means we don't get any time difference. So this needs to be a certain significant difference in time so that it's actually perceivable for us. And this is where the 20% rule comes into play. So the 20% rule simply says that the difference between two timings for us in order to perceivable must be at least 20%. So this means exceptional performance really starts at 1 to 6 seconds. Well, now you might think this is really a lot of time. I mean, one to six seconds for a computer is a lot of time. The problem, however, is that it is not under our control. And like you see in this example, only a very small portion of the whole delivery of a web page is really under our own control. If you look at the web application delivery chain, there are a lot of factors in there, like the internet, third party content we have on our page, and all the processing that also goes on in the browser. So how much time do we really have? So the first thing we have to do, we have to get web content. This actually means resolving our web address via DNS and then requesting the content. So even if you have a very fast network here, these two round trips easily make up 300 milliseconds. So now we're down to 103 seconds. So the point is at that point of time, we haven't downloaded anything yet. So even if you want to download a very small website of about 200 kilobytes over a decent connection, we lose another second. So after content download, we are down to about 0 0.3 seconds. Wow, that's still a lot of time. But now let's take an average client-side processing of rendering and JavaScript execution and take away another 300 milliseconds. This now means we're down to 0, .0 0.0 seconds. OK, we're done with exceptional performance. However, we haven't done any server-side processing yet, so that means we just served static content, not even out of memory. So the question now might come up, whether this thing works here? Is it impossible to be exceptionally fast? The answer is no, it's not impossible, but it's really hard, like this study by Gomez shows, testing 200 websites around the globe and seeing how fast they respond. So while they do a good job in keeping in this four second boundary, there really are none of them actually really, um, none of them really meant, meant to be really in this one to six second boundary here. So the question is, how do we get there? First of all, we have to do our homework, like read Steve's books, Follow, go to Perf Planet, follow WebPerf on the web. And the reality is that a lot of people don't. So a lot of people don't do these easy things, like you see in these examples. Here, this example here, where we again have redirects, just losing 500 milliseconds out of our precious 1.6 seconds here. 
So how good we are is easy to find out. You can use wise low page speed out dyno trace telling you how good you deliver on those best practices. However, the next step is then to look at actual timings because just following best practices doesn't mean that you're really doing a good job. You might do everything perfect, but your site might still be terribly slow. So there are three timings that we're interested in. First of when the user sees the page, when the page is fully loaded. And the next step is we have to benchmark against our competition because we're not the only ones out there trying to get faster. So our competition is doing quite the same thing. So we have to use benchmarking tools to figure out how fast our competition is and then improve our site again. And finally, the question is, so are we done now? Unfortunately not, because we still have to optimize our sites for all users. So even those users that have slow bandwidth connections, that use it on an old mobile phone, whatever. So we have to go out and measure the real user experience. So start really measuring inside the user's browser and getting this data back. And then we have to do this continuously. So that's not a one-time show that you do. So you do it one time, and then you're safe for, for all of it. Because the web changes, because the replication changes continuously, we have to do this over and over again to ensure that our sites stay really exceptionally fast. And that's it with five minutes on exceptional performance.